Yellowstone earthquakes reveal a volcanic system six times bigger than we thought. This is by Dr. Robin Wiley, PhD researcher in volcanology, UCL. This is on the conversation. Seismologists discovered a massive magma reservoir beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming, U.S. that suggests its volcanic system could be more than 5.6 times larger than was previously thought. Although it was already known that Yellowstone had one magma reservoir located about 3 to 10 miles below the surface, the new study published in Science reveals another much larger reservoir sitting directly below the first one, located about 12 to 30 miles below the surface. This reservoir is thought to have a volume of around 46,000 cubic kilometers, compared to a volume of around 10,000 cubic kilometers for the shallow reservoir. So it's at least four times, five times bigger. To make their discovery, scientists analyzed the vibrations made by earthquakes that passed beneath the volcano. The technique not only sheds light to this volcano's potentially life-threatening eruptions, but it could also help us understand other volcanoes such as Calbuco of Chile, which currently erupted. Of course, Yellowstone is a sleeping beauty. Yellowstone Volcano is composed of an immense volcanic, volcanic crater known as the Caldera, more than 44 miles in length, most of which lies within Yellowstone National Park. The volcano rarely erupts lava. It did last erupt lava about 70,000 years ago, but the magma lying beneath the surface gives rise to spectacular geothermal features such as geysers and colorful hot springs. The last eruption at Yellowstone was about 640,000 years ago, and it ejected around 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. This cataclysm created the Yellowstone caldera. To get an idea of the scale, the largest eruption in recorded history, Mount Tambora in 1815, erupted about a sixth of that. Magma reservoirs are thought to occur between most volcanoes and play a crucial role in the dynamics of eruptions. However, they are too deep and conditions within them are too extreme to be measured directly, so volcanologists have to infer information about them using other means, such as measuring seismic waves, earthquakes. These waves travel more slowly when they pass through molten rock and accordingly the group were able to use the velocities of the earthquake waves to infer the presence of a large deep zone of partially molten material. And there's a carbon footprint explained. The magma stored in the deeper reservoir probably does not cause eruptions at Yellowstone directly. Instead, it, it likely acts as a feeder for the smaller, shallower reservoir which is the ultimate source of the volcano's catastrophic eruptions. Scientists have suspected the existence of a second magma reservoir at Yellowstone for some time, but this new evidence is among the strongest support of the theory to date. The discovery of this second magma reservoir may also help to explain a mysterious feature of the Yellowstone volcano, its carbon footprint. Carbon dioxide gas is commonplace at volcanoes it's, it is uh, given off by rising magma, but Yellowstone's output, which is around 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide gas, CO2, every day, 45,000 tons each day, was too high to be explained by a single magma reservoir. But according to the study's authors, the presence of a new reservoir is enough to count for the volcano's CO2 flux. If the high-resolution seismic imaging technique used in the study could be repeated at other volcanoes whose deep structure is poorly understood, such as the Chile volcano at Calbuco, volcanologists might eventually be able to understand how such eruptions take place. The first stirrings of volcanic eruptions happen far below the surface. If researchers can emulate the findings at Yellowstone and other volcanoes, it can only tell us more about the risks they pose.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.